We might be the chihuahua. You are an ostrich. Eggs. Dilly ding, dilly dong, come on. It's electrifying as a hairdryer thrown into a hot tub, my friend. Aguero! Welcome to the Honest Football Podcast, where we bring honesty back to the beautiful game. I'm Daniel Cody, and with me are the usual co-hosts, Craig Savage and Charlie Betts. Hello. Hello. On the show this week, is five aside the future of amateur football, and should there be an extra point for score draws? So guys, what have you been up to this week? Not a lot, mate. I've gone up shirt size. Oh. <laughs> Since we last saw each other. <laughs> Why? Uh, and a few takeaways for you, mate. No, actually, where, where, where have you been this week, Cody? <laughs> Not been doing too much at all, mate. Just working and then eating it all back on. <laughs> <laughs> so, any, what's the uh, takeaway? What places? Well, we've had at least one Chinese, at least one Indian, a couple of Turkish, <laughs> so, no, no, and one good hearty British as well. <laughs> I was just about to say, any British. Charlie, what about you? Uh, I, I went back to work this week after my long layoff, after my, yeah. uh, my knee injury. How, how um, is the knee? Yeah, so knee's not too bad. I've been to the gym zero times this week. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so in a similar vein to you're, Cody, you're, you're I, level with Cody, I'm yeah. putting weight on with him as well. So <laughs> catch him I tell time. you, I put on 14 kilos in like nine months. It's um, unbelievable. For, it, it, you're trying to say it's like 14 kilos, like upper body, like, it's like the whole thing, or like because obviously the leg obviously has to uh, deteriorate because obviously the lack of movement. Yeah, the problem being is that um, I'm a school teacher. I had a, a basically a, an evening where I had to do a presentation for new parents coming up to the school. Yes. So I put on my usual shirt, but I've got to be honest, the buttons are a lot tighter than previous times that I've worn it. So is it, are you sure, they is were it, properly, is it now synthet? properly <laughs> bursting. Like I said to the front row, just be careful because it like pings out of you. It's like, it just, <laughs> and the buttons. No, uh, the in case the buttons ping out of you. So yeah, it's not been it's not been a great week for the for the re- rehab, to be honest, Craig. Uh, how, about, how about yourself? Uh, yeah, same as you. Also got new problems. That's given me aggro for the whole week. Um, and dealing with customers, working in retail is not the best way to uh, deal with customers. I've had some very angry customers over some recent changes to the, uh, my company that I work for, and uh, it hasn't gone down too well. Lovely. Good week all round. Yeah, not positives. Bad. Loads not of bad. positives. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Father sides. Is it the future for amateur football? What do you think, Charlie? For, for amateur football, I don't know really. I'd like to know some facts and figures if anyone's got any um, on the situation. No. I think it's good. I think there's value in it. I don't know if it's necessarily... I think it's, it's a good training aid or a good way of... I don't know, even if you are an amateur footballer, a good way of maintaining fitness, maybe, you know, small sort of areas, being able to play in that, maybe. I don't know. I think... I, think I, don't, I, don't I, think, I quite enjoy it, yeah. I don't think it can grow into like a, a massive platform. Well, I think we alluded to it the other week is, is obviously there is a decline in 11-a-side football, so is... I suppose the question is, is 5 side football going to take over from that then? I guess it looks like it's becoming the most cost-effective option now anyway, doesn't it? It, 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 it it's, can it's be cheaper. It's obviously a lot easier to get five people together than it is to get 11 together. So, <laughs> that true, sounds simple. True, but uh, obviously, two different days. Obviously, one's a Sunday and the other's a midweek. And that's the biggest benefit to five side. And we, we shouldn't just say five aside. It's, it's small-sided side. football, isn't it? Five to seven aside. You've got normally floodlit arenas. It's easy to do midweeks after work. It's a lot easier for participation. Particularly as people are getting older with kids and families and things like that, is mm. Sunday mornings are a bit difficult sometimes, you know. So, can, but can, midweek evenings is a better thing. Can they bring that five-a-side technique, all the skills net, into an eleven-side game? I don't think it's a direct comparison. I mean, I guess the one thing we would say from that is most Sunday league teams over the winter have to train in five-a-side arenas because they have no other yeah. option. So. I guess in that sense you would say no because we've seen the standards of Sunday League football, haven't we? So no, I think I do. I do like five side, but I think uh, I don't think you can recreate that same uh, competitive element. You know, I, I think we've all played five side. I, I very rarely remember what the score is. I, I, normally, because it's like twenty-five, twenty-four. It's called rush people. It's called doesn't matter. Yeah, it's called. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I, I don't feel it's as competitive as it would be for eleven side game. As you said, like yeah. people just rush and fly and go and goal, and. I could score six one game in the five side game, but I know I'm not going to score six in the eleven side. 
just going slightly off topic, until I got to high school, I didn't realise it was Rush and Fly. I thought it was Rush and Fly. So you like just thought it was Vladimir Putin's and I, For years, I think, what, what relevance does that have to a goalkeeper not being in goal? Well, you know how it works, but you know, like, it being all started, in and out. What's, what's Russian about that? Like, it all started with a Russian linesman in 1966. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some Russian invented the game, so it was called Russian Fly, because he was, I don't know, had a fan, he was a fan of insects, I don't know. But yeah, so I think... I guess one of the benefits from the fiver side is it does give you a lot more time to be on the ball and have technique yeah, involved. Yeah, that's, does that's it really? True. Well, I guess from 11 aside, is you just does it you really? so often see the long hoof over the top because there's there's nothing stopping you. But obviously, with the fiver side, you've obviously got the nets at the top a lot of the time. Yeah, but the walls at the side. You some have to some fiver side, side some fiver side games are under head height. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's good for technique and stuff. Isn't yeah, it? but Surely. you got players. you don't like this because you're a centre half and you can't play long balls at centre forward. <laughs> and let's then, be it, it, it will. Direct to my player later on in the shit list. But, <laughs> um, but I, I generally don't agree with it. Yeah, it's 20 minutes spurts and you... But, like, when you're trying to work like in a formation, there's no formation to play in five sides. It's, it's like when you watch kids football and everyone runs to the ball. It's pretty similar to that. I would say the standard five side formation is one two one, is it not? <laughs> <laughs> no! I do... Uh, yeah, I think there's two sides to it. I think if you're look, using it as a training tool or as a way of getting fit and stuff, training I think it's tool, very, yes. very good. If you're using it to replace your, your Saturday I, or Sunday morning football... I don't think it can this replace... This is where I've got to start off There's no... There's, there's five sides. there's fake leagues. <laughs> fake leagues. Well, with, with random names. The same as okay. the Sunday League teams. With, with like Gibraltar and yeah, obviously right. no disrespect to the people of Gibraltar Gibraltar reserves for copyright Gibraltar, reasons yeah <laughs> Gibraltar reserves for copyright reasons don't they well I mean, we've heard the argument for the prosecution so what's what's the sort of defensive side so here's my argument for the defence we have mentioned previously about the decline in 11 side football we've mentioned it again briefly tonight five side football is the only form or small sided football should say five seven sides the only form of football where participation has increased in the UK in the last 10 years Didn't know that. there's now 1.5 million people participating at least once a week in small sided football whether that be leisurely or competitively and there's now over 30,000 sorry how's it competitively of course you've been at, at small leagues so I've been involved in leagues at the, the local right. arenas where we've been playing little five-a-side leagues six-a-side leagues they can really do some to... quite big things can't they I mean you get yeah. your chance to play Wembley yeah, so that's yeah. that, that, that people's yeah. cup whatever it is that's yeah. five-a-side there's 30,000 organised teams now playing in leagues in five-a-side so that's the... I mean someone's playing well, a league somewhere mate the people's <laughs> cup's probably the only cup that well right. it's the only one you're willing to recognise <laughs> Because it's good. There's the inter... Um, what do you call it? You get the work in, in, cut. Inter-centre ones. No, but like... So a local one here, like there's inter-leagues within that, isn't there? I guess one, quite frequently, I one of the best things for me, I think, is among youth football as well. Is we talk about grassroots quite a lot and we always focus on ourselves because we're selfish people. <laughs> <laughs> for the young... Someone people, has to. <laughs> Someone has obviously to. Obviously for younger kids at school as well, they play seven and size, six size. But we've already talked last week about parents being pushy and on the sidelines screaming at people particularly linesmen who are just other parents trying to have a laugh. <laughs> but it's a less competitive outlet for them. You've mentioned how do you recreate that competition, but that's a good thing for five and six side for children. They do get the chance to focus on technique like they do in other European countries that vastly outperform us on the professional scale as well. Well, they start with that, don't they? A lot of the, particularly, I think if you follow like the Dutch sort of model, which yeah. I, I don't know very well, but it's all, it builds Spanish up, doesn't model. it? Yeah, but I think, I suppose there's less resources needed, isn't there, in terms of, you know, you only need one ref as opposed to having linesmen and flags and all that. Which means you're fighting for yours. Yeah, that's true. And they're out of the cage anyway, so they can't exactly lamp the... Yeah, but they can ref, but... It's I think for violence. Yeah, it's good for... <laughs> it's good for violence. If you want to reduce the number of violence, uh, violence attacks cage. towards referees, then yeah, go, put them in a cage. Uh, get get no, the referee in a like, American football suit. That's what you're trying to say. Yeah. No, but I, I think, yeah, I think there is that. I think it's um, I think it's got its place, isn't it? I... I, I I suppose it's is it cheaper though? I mean, what the cost of a pitch now? What is it's well, quite that's the problem, isn't it? The fear is as more and more people are going for five, six, seven aside now, is the arenas are getting more and more and more expensive for yeah, less for time use. and now because we're getting more competitive it's, leagues it's and now having referees. Think it's, it's, the, the same. it's the quality still there for refereeing on five aside? Is, is the quality of pitches? I can only say three G. Uh, I can only say I've recently the six and pitches. seven aside leagues I've played. Oh, I think I know referees. what the problem is here. Go on. Because Craig has got one of the longest throws of anyone I've ever seen. And obviously, in five aside, you can't throw the yeah, ball. They have to that's roll exactly it what it is. The wall. So that's, that's, what, that's what this ball's down to from his it's front. Got nothing to he's do. bitter that he can't use that it's absolute it's... rocket of a throw that he's got. <laughs> so, 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 so what we've established is it's good for football and bad for Craig's <laughs> 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 it's got, No, First of all, it's got nothing to do with my throwing. 
because <laughs> it would just be from one side of the pitch to the other and we well we've seen some long balls like a certain manager likes to play like Big Sam <laughs> <laughs> clearly works with long throws we work with Stoke but going back to five sides properly I I don't believe in I don't think you can get as competitive as you would for eleven aside. I, yeah, but you're trying to recreate the competition as a whole. Yeah, thing but, for football. Football's not just competition. I'm not but saying it's, I'm not for, no, for fitness. It's a good I, thing. I would say it's defence though. The the argument was the decline of eleven aside football. So is it to replace that, or is it just that I suppose maybe people just do football differently? It's a bit more of that street. Because what's, what's it like? Um, what's it, place it, it, it's called? either uh, it's, not for, is it favelas? Like, almost yeah, like that. There's yeah, no lead. It's yeah. just playing for the fun of it. Almost. Yeah. Which maybe that's where you want to recreate. That's like playing jumper for goalposts. Because I mean, eleven aside is never going to become yeah. unpopular. Not in terms of playing, but in terms of watching. We watch it in greater numbers than we ever have before. True. We I don't play think it in video games are more than we ever have done. Well, the only thing, my only worry with that would be is it gets a bit like basketball, where scores it, people score so often it loses its. Um, I, I don't want appeal. I, if you know what I mean. I don't want to hear. Oh, how'd you go at five aside today? Yeah, we won 12 2. Yeah. And 16. You say eight. that, but for me, the reason I got into football in the late 90s was the Sky Sports Masters League. Oh, that, that's the different. Old legends. And that's that, different. Yeah, but that's the reason I love football. Oh, I saw that before I saw any of them. That is game. absolutely different because they're old men at the pre-watch retirement. They are, they are playing five aside, though. I, mean, I, I went aside. and watched that at Milton Keynes, by the way. That was brilliant. <laughs> Uh, I got, I got Ian Bishop's autograph, which is uh, <laughs> which is my highlight. To be legend. Him and Clive Allen on it at the front, but yeah, no, I think it. But you, we see in the pub leagues now where there's 45, 50 year olds playing, and they have no intention of playing football. I they just want to get the air. I paid that forty um, against forty year olds last season Absolutely. on a Sunday. So you can see the thing with the Masters League that just gets them involved. In yeah. the final side level, it, it keeps the health up. It's the thing that we can't really get a level. Ne- ne- as we're all examples of, we can't get a level. Next, thing, you, next <laughs> thing you're going to say that the decline of eleven side football is now walking football. Well, I, 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 well, I would. That's another argument for another day because I'm strongly think, in support of that as well. Yeah, right? I think yeah, that's well, not bad. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you can't run, you shouldn't be excluded from playing football. No, I, I agree. Quite, walk, I, I like inclusive. walking football. Inclusive society. It's a great way to stop people falling out of love with the game at a certain yeah. age and a certain generation. I, I, I like the walking football, not going to lie. The That's only, the only <laughs> bit I like about the final side of it. <laughs> the thing is, I think you have to... I think you need that balance of it, don't you? You know, because there's nothing more worth... I, I, I mean, I'm rubbish at five side for all the thing, things of playing 11 side. I, I'm just very bad at it. I enjoy it, but I'm really bad at it. But the first time someone does like a step over and smashes one in the corner... My first thought is, yeah, that's great, but now they're on an 11 a side pitch. Exactly, yeah. Let's so I think it's, it, all the time it's, it's, it's sort of viewed as inferior, isn't it? And I think yeah. until that, maybe that perception changes. But I, I think like, I, 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 I've been in the Sunday League team where I've had a couple of players in midfield and I've like, he's got good feet, but he's a five a side player. Yeah, absolutely. And we've, we've when, when you play an 11 a side game, it's, that's, that's crap. I guess maybe we viewed this question the wrong way, from my point of view anyway. It's not really for me. I don't see it replacing the competition of no. the side. It doesn't have the capability to do that. But as a good for football, there is certainly a oh, absolutely. place for it. I mean, if you look, I've got uh, just a few things about, like in terms of um, improving fitness levels. So if you, short, if you take it against, if you, well, to be honest, if I was to say to you, right boys, you need to get yourself fitter, the natural go-to thing is, right, I'm just going to go out for a long run. So if you compare the advantages of five well, aside, sure about him. Well, yeah, yeah. Why just stopping? But if shops, yeah, run into a little curry house. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, if you compare that, so say small sided games against running, suddenly it's a lot more appealing. So you know, if you look at the fact of the advantages of it, you've got pro- a lot more motivation. I mean, yeah. uh, we've all been out on a run and about a, a quarter of a mile in, you've had enough. Whereas, Don't you know, the constant... Pre- yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's pre-season training. <laughs> Being a general. So that's what I mean, but that's my point, is actually, could you replace those ridiculously long runs and stuff that you would do at a pre-season with things that are a bit with more five-side side based, like footstep? You know, a lot of... A lot, I, I mean, not I'm going for jobs That's a good question. But I had a look at um, Luton Town were advertising for a coach. I only know this because I was looking through other jobs. Like, mm. Don't let my boss do this. Uh, no. <laughs> But they part he of their, wants to part stay, of their by the way. was they wanted the UA for B coach, which is great, etc. But mm-hmm. they also wanted some of a futsal qualification, which is obviously in the same bracket as five aside, isn't it? You know that sort. Of yeah. Absolutely. Anyway, back to the original point. So if you're saying like obviously motivations improve. It's a lot more movement specific if you're a footballer rather yeah. than. I mean, you never just run in a straight line for four miles on a football pitch. You know. Absolutely. So there's that. Unless you're a winger. In constant tactical awareness. You know, you're sort of improving that side of it and your technical skills. And actually, it's a, 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 a probably decrease of injuries. In the sense of, you know, your, your joints running on the road for miles at a time is not good. But, but playing five-a-side is. And I think it, the main one for that is motivation. So suddenly then, five-a-side is probably a bit more appealing. Well, and hence but the but we've got, I think, as well. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, yeah, but injuries on 
3G pitches. I agree with. I agree with. This. Yeah, I think you, you can get a lot more injuries on a 3G pitch on that's the fiber that, side because you're say, twisting and turning as much. I don't think that's down to the surface. Support you with that. That's down to the surface. If you but played on the what? indoor, remember the old fiber side indoor? Oh, like yeah. oh yeah. You, know, you, can't, you can't twist and you know but half of them were as hard as a road. Yeah, that's true. You fall yeah, yeah. over, <laughs> land on your knee. You are. You might as well have played on the road. I mean, there obviously I, are. I did. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> there are disadvantages to it. It is difficult to work out intensity. So actually, you could just sack it off in a five-side game, and you know, you can no, just walk off. Like, what what I mean is, is it, it's quite embarrassing if you're walking when you should be running. Whereas on a football pitch, you can on a five-side pitch, sorry, you can loaf for a little bit, you know, and no one's really going to notice. So or you can just switch and be the rush keeper. For you could be the rush keeper for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, fitness. And I suppose there is that risk of injury in the sense of people colliding together that you don't get with running. I'm not trying to get away from the point. What I mean is, is that actually five a side is quite um, uh, an uh, what's the word? attractive way of getting fit compared to the old ways of just running around you know, the block. Do you know what I mean? So maybe that's the way we should view it. It's actually not a way of replacing the level of side football, but actually as a way of improving endurance in a much more fun way than street beating. Do you know what I mean? I, so, I, 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 I... Don't think I can have fun on the fire side because like, they, they, they get. But why? They're, they're why? Because this is what we get to Because they get rid of certain rules. I one fire side is I can't do a slide tackle when. All right, there can be some bad tackles. Now, but I like, still protect the injured. <laughs> no, you can you can make perfect. You can make normal tackles where you might give away a fan. It's fine. It happens in the game. Yeah. Football. But when you make you can make a slide tackle when you can win the ball easily, and then they um flat um. Whistle goes off and you're like, ah, oh, for fuck's it's, sake. It's a bit more dangerous when there's a wall rather than a touchline. <laughs> no, no, no. And I'm going to be really cynical not, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying it was a wall because that's just stupid. <laughs> when, it, when it's like in the middle of the pitch. Oh, right. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be cynical here and don't, this is not personal to you. I'm saying this is a defender myself. If you've had to make a slide tackle, the likelihood is you were probably in the wrong position or something's gone wrong before that. I'm yeah, the view that if, you do, really, if you've had to hit the ground, wrong. something's gone wrong before that. So what the point being but is if, that... If you, if you, no, if, if you you're generally making an attempt for the ball. If you can't win a standing yeah. tackle, you then, don't deserve to be winning exa- that tackle. Exactly, that's the point I'm trying to get at. And in five side, I totally agree with that. I think it's all about the technique, isn't it? It's, it's, you're not there to be blood, guts guess, and fun. Though, I guess the know? final point for me from it would be that there's been occasions, you've been in my team at that time, where we've turned up to 11 aside pitches that in the villages that are a bit bigger <laughs> than normal. And we've gone, how can we get ourselves on the bench today? Because yeah. I really don't want to run up there. <laughs> so I think the five aside, as Charlie said, it's more attractive. It brings us in. It's a small arena. You know, you've only got ten yards to go if you make a mistake. You know, you can sit on a wall for a couple of minutes. You know, there's there's plenty of benefits. I, I would say just the last point I'm going to make, and this is going to sound egotistical, and I don't mean it like that because maybe I'm that guy sometimes. But I think five aside weeds out the meatheads. As in, you can't just be a, a you know we've played on a Sunday or a Saturday, and you get someone who's not interested in playing football. The, the moment the ball's in the air or is a 50 50, he's just going to cane you. No matter what, you know, he's got no footballing ability. He's probably been kicked out by his missus and he's been from, at the pub for the last 12 hours, pissed out of his face. Shit, that's stereotype. Right? Right? Yeah, yeah, by the way, yeah. No, but do you know what I mean? Whereas that's that, your dream. But you can't, you can't do that in five. So there's literally no place for someone like that. So, I, I, you know, no, I've, I've, I've been, been to as, a, a, What I'm trying to say is, is I suppose you have a, a certain threshold then for the technical ability. The focus is on football. Yeah, you and, if, you do, if, and if you're not good enough, then you need to be good enough almost. You well, know? you need to be a runner to save the other four. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, being, just being goblin, yeah? That's what you're trying to say. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. That for me would be, I suppose to, to sum up on my point, I think there's a, I think there very much is a place for it in football, but I think it training purposes. Yeah, training, but also yeah, and a way of getting fit. I think you know it's never going to take over eleven side. I think we've established that. It's more for the casual and the social rather than the yeah wanting to be a competitive. I, I do worry a little bit, like we were saying earlier, the cost of it. I think it, if we're not, it is starting we, to spiral a bit. It's going to catch up with eleven. Yeah, away, yeah, you know, like you end up paying a lot for a pitch and. It's difficult because I suppose he, if you're, in, I think if you enter a league, obviously you've got a guaranteed fixture more, more or less. But then you, you try to organise them up to ten mates. Get, one drops still, out, the whole thing goes down yeah, the toilet. You still, then, yeah, but you still get the exact same thing as the other side. Is oh, the team hasn't turned up, so if you wasted your evening yeah. as much as wasting your morning on a Sunday. After but at least you haven't paid for a babysitter. <laughs> I think that <laughs> you're, you're relying on this whole <laughs> argument on a babysitter. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, but, but what I mean, I mean, five side doesn't have to be like you're saying, Craig. It doesn't have to be a league. If you've got a group of friends, you have twelve mates. You can do. You're going to get at side. least one or two who are not good at football and treat That's it like a league. Stereotype. I mean, if you're and treat it like a league. What if your mates seen... mate play for a football team? Then, if they get injured on a Saturday for the for the Saturday team. Well, then that no, proves no. that Charlie's 11 a side is more dangerous. Though, no, yeah, no, no, no. What I mean is, is that you, you're. If I need that player for an 11 a side game of the weekend, 
and they get near the other side. No, no, no. Yeah, because I'm a little side guy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not a five side guy. Let's pick with face to facts on that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, lads. I think I think I definitely think there's a place for it. I think I think we've proved that five side has a place in in, in football. I don't think you agree with it necessarily, Craig, but I think it's... I think to, to, to a certain point. I think we've agreed that we're never going to agree. <laughs> and that's honesty for you. <laughs> right, um, shit this time, people. Just a reminder on the, who's in the squad so far, the starting lineup. In the shit list. Uh, in goal, we've got Stephen Bywater. Yeah, here, here, yeah. Which we all agree to. Which we all agree to. No. At the moment, Ben Jarney's on the bench. We, did we agree to that, Ben Jarney on the bench? Or what, uh, until we can find a way to get him off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Until you ben Jarney, I'm not convinced about he, He's Zimbabwe's best import, we said that, apart from Peter Rundloff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, two new positions we're going to look on today. We're going to fill the positions of left back and a centre half today. Right, but, very good. Uh, Centre half currently plays for Manchester United. Previously at Fulham, previously at a non-league club, Chris Smallin. See, for me, I don't think if you've started at non-league and made it professional and then played for your country, I can't see how you can feasibly be on the shit list. If you've started non-league and you're playing for your country, so people like Ian Wright, all of them, they should never be on the shit list ever. Well, we've got Ian Wright is one of my favourite players. I mean, yeah. Chris Smalling's a bit of an exception in the sense that he has had it very lucky since he's been in the Premier League. So I've got a little story for Chris Smalling. And hundred, oh, get, sorry, 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 I'll let you know. 195 Premier League appearances, 13 for Fulham and 182 for Man United. 11 goals and two Premier League titles. Well, while you're on the appearances, I've got one thing for that. Because I was looking at his trophy hall and his medal hall. Yeah. His two Premier League winners medals yep. were in the season's... 10-11 and 12-13. Yep. They are the two seasons in which he has made the least Premier League appearances <laughs> <laughs> in his Manchester United career. 15 and 16 respectively, not all stars. Because it, so he played less than a half the season and less than a third star. Do you know why he hasn't he played least? Because Vinic and Ferdinand were there and they won them the title. Exactly. <laughs> um, made his Premier League debut... Um, well, made his Premier League start, shall I say, against Chelsea... In 2009-10, and uh, scored nine goal. <laughs> Good well, start. Leads me on to my story of Chris Smalling, actually, in the 9-10 season as well. Was we went to watch uh, a game between Fulham and Aston Villa at the cottage. Mm-hmm. Sir Alex Ferguson was in attendance, presumably to scout him, as we later know. He played against Gabby Bonlahor up front. <laughs> Gabby <laughs> Bonlahor oh, made him look like he was still in non-league. And <laughs> Gabby Bonlahor, as we know, has, had a t- has his tough times. Mm-hmm. Not the greatest finisher. He took him to the cleaners in that game. <laughs> and Chris Smalling still went to United three months later. I, I think, um, as a centre-half, Chris Smalling plays like me. And and not well, because he can't pass a ball for day. Like This is why he has not been in the World Cup squad for, for, under Gareth Southgate. He Absolutely. can't pass a ball. And then he'll go on a, a run for no reason, and then goes out of position and loses the ball. So the area I'm in agreement with you completely is regarding that. It's... it's it's not about being a footballer. He is a centre half, <laughs> and he does not need to play football. I don't care what Gareth Southgate says. I don't care what Pep Guardiola says, and anyone else in between. <laughs> it is not about playing football. He's a centre half, and Sam Allardyce will tell you exactly. That. <laughs> do, you, do you think um, he got Man United Player of the Year in um, yeah, 2014-15? A... But that was Louis Van Gaal in charge. <laughs> And so they were very focused defensively, not on football really. I know they kept the ball a little bit. I know bit. Like De Gea has won a few Player of the Year titles and Chris, some of Chris yeah. Morland has. But and I mean, let's say the year he's won it was one of the poorer seasons in United's history. Yeah, it, was, it, wasn't, history. it was pretty. Yeah. It wasn't pretty to watch. Yeah, I mean, it, I agree. I do. I, I think it, it... I didn't realise how little he played for Fulham, actually. He was there for two years. He only played 13 times. Um, Which tells you something, doesn't it? No, I, I, I give him credit from being non-league at Manchester yeah. Um, yeah. And then getting the opportunity to play uh, for Roy Hodgson and Fulham. And he's been capped to England. Uh, what he was played for the schoolboys at under eighteen, you know, which is I think is is good in the sense of still maintaining the fact that I think schools football is very important. But he played for England at under twenties and England under twenty ones, and played thirty one times for the national side. So, but he's not done it at a tournament. I mean, no, most well, like, to be fair, Chris uh, well, okay, has right, played the World Cup and he was in that team against Ireland. On, on his head, then who's better than him for England? If you're telling me he should be in the shit list, who's better than him? 
Well, there are players who are playing at teams lower down the league who will probably... Yeah, but like who? Two years come on. Alfie Mawson's an example of yeah. one for me, linked with your West Ham United. Well, you might end up playing with him the way it sounds like <laughs> it, but yeah, you got uh, Mitch Smalling's going to be going as well, isn't he? Well, not from the Sayfield Giants because he's definitely... No, see, player. that's that, but that's my issue. Like, how can you not take but this morning, for is, example? Is that yeah. the only reason that me and you are saying that he might not be in a shit list is because there are no other good English centre-halves? No, because no, but the that's point... That's not a reason, is it? No, I agree. Because they're all shit. <laughs> no, I, well, no, probably are, to be honest, aren't they? No, I agree. I think, I think he, he's probably... Well, are, you trying to say made... is, are you trying to say that Chris Smalling should be starting for England? No, I'm not saying he should be starting for England, but I think he should be higher up the pecking order than other people who are there. To be brutally honest, he, he lost out to James Tarkovsky of Burnley. Yeah, but what Who's point had does an that make? He's had an excellent season with Burnley, I think. Okay, and yeah. Ben Mee should be. You there can't tell me he's been well. any worse than Phil Jones, for example, or Gary Cahill. Gary Cahill has been awful this year. Absolutely. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be talking about Premier League, but, really, should we? But I mean, I mean the this, big this is teams only picking the big players for the national team yeah, is another yeah. argument. For no, I, I, I understand that, but well, okay, no, I tell you what, I tell you what, no, no, because we haven't really gone to the, we haven't gone to the crux of this. I think we've established that probably Chris Smalling is not the best English centre half we've ever had. What I don't think he's a good footballer. What you haven't established is why he's actually on your shit list, though. What has he specifically done more so? And hear me, hear me out. More so than any other English centre half that has wound you up. Because no, that's the whole point. As, as you know, the fan, I've watched him every week, and he's just really clumsy. Uh, like you want yeah. the centre half to be solid. You want. A ball, so, he's a ball player as well. But, but what I mean is, so Phil, Phil Jones is like that. So what's what's Phil he Jones, specifically done that that say someone like Phil Jones did, hasn't? Phil Jones is funny. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Smalling sounds so boring. The thing that frustrates me most with the Chris Smalling and, and, and the fact that sorry, Chris <laughs> Smalling has been United captain. Yeah, yeah but that, that's not the reason. That's, that's not his fault, to be fair. Louis van Gaal's footballer. Oh, yeah, Mike's that's what I'm saying. When he's Mike Smalling, he is ledge. When he's Chris Smalling, he's shit. The thing with Chris Smalling for me is the same thing that not, used to annoy me. No offence about playing with you at centre half. <laughs> you can't imagine Bouguera. We have. We're all players with limited ability. Let's be fair. Is I'm. Uh, it's, when you have limited ability and you're focusing on defence and you're not a passer of the ball, is you cannot be positionally better. You cannot run off and go on a clumsy run because you feel like, oh, I might get a goal once every three years. <laughs> you know. Chris Smalling, you said yourself is guilty of this, and you do know you that because that's why you have the name Maggio Bouguera, who's in a very similar mould. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think I'm in total agreement with you for Chris Smalling, I, and I can't quite explain the reasons I why. Watched, exactly. I, watched, I watched the goal um, Chelsea scored uh, 2016 17 season, and he's trying to shepherd the ball away, like across um, a, a long ball came through. And he's trying to shepherd the ball away, well, to De Gea, not having a clue. Just yeah. clear the fucking ball first, man. Just yeah. No, yeah, I agree. I head. agree. These are all. And then Pedri has gone in and scored. Absolutely. I agree. These are all criminal offences. I suppose what I'm saying is, is that if you look back at previous weeks, they've all specifically done something really, something really that cut to the core of why they're on the shit list. So if you maybe what, said to me, uh, he got, as a defender, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. as a defender. But if you just said to me he got sent off in the Manchester derby or something like that, that's a fair shout, then. Cost United the league title. Exactly. That's the point. But you weren't going to say that to the title. Title. <laughs> you know? I was getting to the point of that. This shit list is flawed. No, I'm joking. No. <laughs> um, no, I no, I probably it was. I think it was more defenders union sticking up for him. To, to a point, I just I do. I'm think, the defender as well. I just <laughs> think that he he's a bit of a scapegoat. As well. I'm not saying he's good in this, any way, shape, or form, and is better than say John Stones or whatever. But I just do feel like whenever that goes wrong, he is made a bit of a scapegoat. I just know? think for the career he's, he's had, there. he's very lucky for the I think, talent. I think yeah. he's very lucky. You could say that he's married to a page three model as well, so he is. He's very That's lucky outside. He, he, of must the have a horse, he must have a horseshoe up his ass. <laughs> That's quite to get a contract to Man United like that. To play constant, uh, get a captain of <laughs> Man United. I think that's the quote to finish this morning. <laughs> so, are so we in a vote of two to one, then, by the sound of Chris Morning is is he included then? With yeah, his Chris, horseshoe up his arse. Yes, he's in in there. He's, he's by two of us being there. He's definitely in the he, squad. He's it? very lucky well, again to make us. very lucky again to make the shit list. <laughs> um, okay, left back time. Um, Oh, right. this I one, don't this know. Genius, so I don't know why. How I've done this again, but it's another former Portsmouth player. Um, I can already tell you the one reason he deserves to be in there, <laughs> regardless of the teams that he's played for, etc. I'll let you go for it first. Um, <laughs> this guy's made 112 Premier League appearances, no goals. Jimmy Traore. I mean, let's, 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 right, let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. <laughs> He's got that, Champions League. That, yeah, he's got Champions League. But that ridiculous own goal against Burnley, where yeah. he pretty much backheeled it over his own Pre- goal. Pretty line. much in my notes, I wrote best FA Cup own goal, or one of them, only second to Wayne Hatswell. <laughs> what was, um, <laughs> what was clumsy, Wayne Hatswell? Wayne Hatswell's the guy took the shot, keeper saved it, 
and the, it, Wayne had the ball pretty much in the six yard and smashed the top corner. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. That's, that's brilliant. It, I, you should Google I, it if you haven't. I, yeah, yeah brilliant. absolutely brilliant. One of the best goals of all the time. Um, clumsy, woeful, and I don't need to say any more. I mean, Champs League medal. Yeah, I mean, I, I came started. into this. I came into this wanting to be completely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be controversial. It's, I was doing my research on you, Jim Traore the last day. Please don't tell too. me you're saying Jim Traore. I've seen a few great things. So I actually had a little watch of the, some of the Champions League final from oh, five, the Istanbul final that's so famous now. And something we maybe don't remember is quite late on in the game at three three, Jimmy Traore makes a goal line clearance from Andrei Shevchenko. And that is the only reason Liverpool did not lose that game in 90 minutes. Um, in 90 Good minutes, point. yeah, but in extra time, well... Yeah, no, you can't, you can't knock him for he that. He played 120 minutes of the Champions League final in a winning Could you team. imagine Jimmy Traore? Yeah, Trier I will say, he's not in the same bracket as like Ross Turnbull. You know, remember that Chelsea keeper? Yes. Or Stephen Bywater. Stephen Bywater. No, no, yeah, no, yeah. The, when does Stephen Bywater get to Champions League? No, but League? you know what I mean, yeah, he's not in the same bracket as that. He did play... I'd be, I, I think he probably needs to go into the fact that he got dropped for Stephen Warnock, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, he lost that, that's a travesty. He lost to Steve backs. Warnock and um, uh, John Arisa. Oh, yeah, Arisa. Yeah. John Arisa. John Arisa. John Arisa. And John Arisa. That that's also scored one of the great own goals. I think moving on from that, when he left Liverpool, obviously as a result of those things, and went to Charlton, he got sent off on his debut as well. <laughs> In their relegation season. In their relegation season. And then he went to join uh, other clubs. All I would say Portsmouth is number one. He played in the Europa League. He, he, played, he, he played a whole season, mon- uh, two seasons at Monaco. You know, he's not, he probably is, he's no mug. I've got to say that. Well, he well, 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 yeah. is. Um, do you know, he joined Liverpool in 98 99. He wasn't that long ago, was it? 98 99, he joined him. Wow. I he didn't play that. a game for three, four years. But, but I think he had a couple of loans on the lower French. Yeah. Years, um, I mean, he probably deserves to go in it because during uh, the 2009 season, he went on loan to Birmingham City. We were in the championship on, a, on an emergency loan, Didn't he put his and within the first few weeks, he, took, he <laughs> yeah, he, he sustained a hamstring injury. So yeah. you know, and, um, currently probably... assistant manager at Seattle Sanders. Uh, Sanders. Well, he finished his career. He finished his career. And where are they in the league table? Uh, well, uh, let's not judge the American yeah, league yeah. table because they fav- give favouritism to the team. Where they're, they're, where, do you know? Yeah, they're about well, nine different they're, tables, they're, they're bottom. They're, oh, they're, they're, they're probably bottom. Yeah, but actually, hang on, hang on. He's not the main man, is he? He's like an assistant coach. He's part of coaching setup. Yeah, but you can't put me in the shit list for that. I'm not, saying, no, I'm not putting the shit list for that. Steve Morrow used to be involved at SC Dallas. He needs to go on there or something. You know, like. <laughs> Steve Morrow saves himself for his arm. For his shoulder. <laughs> so, um, in agreement, Jimmy Traore, shit list. Um, yeah, but only just, because I, I think the, the own goal only slightly overshadows the fact that he did win the Champions League final and played for Monaco. So, but yes, because but of yes, that ridiculous yes. own goal. That ridiculous own goal. That, that's what I pretty much right. I, I guess goal. based on my argument for Chris Smalling, I have to say yes, because he had a very lucky career for the talent. Bloody <laughs> hell, we feel all right, guys. Two, two for two. <laughs> so, more players added to the shit list. Find yeah. out next week. Who's going to be the new candidates for the Premier League shit list? Okay, so, moving on to draws. First of all, I think... We need to really cut to the core of this issue. There's two or three different ways you can go with this, but I feel that too many times now there are teams turning up two games, not just in the Premier League, I mean all over, in local level, genuinely Sunday mornings a lot, playing for a nil-nil. And I genuinely think there should be some sort of, retro, not retrospective, but some sort of punishment, <laughs> but not you can't dock points. You can't dock points, but I don't think... Make you, it less appealing. Yeah, it's essentially what I'm saying. So just to give you a few facts, in English football... Uh, since 2005, there are up to, well, pretty much on average, eight and a half, nearly 9% of games are nil-nil draws. Which doesn't sound a lot, but you think that means one in every 10 games is going to be a nil-nil draw. Now, if you're a West Ham fan, that feels like That's 10, every game. 10 games. Yeah, exactly. A few of them yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if you, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's only when you put it in context of the rest of Europe. I'll put me wrong sheet on there, That's not good, is it? Right, hang on. where's my facts? Here we go. I've got them somewhere. <laughs> We could do with some intermission music for you, Charlie. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I've <laughs> lost it. I've lost it. He's lost Essentially, yeah, I don't know where the sheet's gone. Oh, here we go, right. So, if we put it into context, the the team with the, the least amount of draws in football... Now, nah, if we get it, we can stay in, boys, it'll be good. Carry, carry um, on. I'm glad so, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, in the Dutch area, if you're talking about major leagues in Europe, I'll ah, give you a few funny ones. I don't think that's a major league. If that's no, all no, yeah, start, okay, yeah, yeah. But only, only 5% of games are drawn, okay? The next one after that, 7% is the Italian Serie A, okay? Spain, Spain, everyone, everyone knows that outside of the top two, Spanish football is boring, is 7%. Um, then you've got the French League on 8%. Then the Brit- and then well, Britain, sort of English leagues on um, just under 9%. The only one that is more boring than the English League in terms of nil-nil draws is the German League. 
Okay. I'm quite surprised it's only seven percent. But the German league for the nil-nil draws is made up for by the goals in the other game. Yeah, Normally. true. Because Barnes scored all of them. Well, that's the argument with Charlie's here, with the Spanish league having less draws. Is that not just because we're having as boring a game with an 8 0 Real Madrid win every week or an 8 0 Barcelona win every week? But at least you get to see goals. Well, I suppose yeah. I'm coming at it at two angles. Firstly, as a, as a as someone who goes to watch football, I hate going to watch a, a football match, whether it's local or Premier League or whatever, and it being 0 0. I hate not seeing a goal because that's really what you come for. You know, that's your. Absolutely. Really, that's and, and it's to goals win games. Grassroots football is copying the Premier League, isn't it? I would say we're quite lucky that we're not in the Egyptian division because up to 13% of games are drawn there, <laughs> nil-nil, and Get those are Romanian league. Again. But the league you want to watch, actually, believe it or not, out, uh, well, the Scottish league, which is only 4% of games, which doesn't surprise me because, to be honest, they barely defend. But the one <laughs> they, can't, you, they barely do, they can't defend. The one that you want to go to is the Qatari league. Under 3% of games are nil-nil, which pretty much means that most games don't finish nil-nil. Go for it. So, Ultra attacking. That's the sort of facts and figures. In terms of how do we get Can away from that? your argument, Charlie. Well, the point I'm trying to get at is, I hate nil-nils, how do we get rid of them, okay? And my proposal, my proposal is, is that we have some sort of point system, a bit like they do in rugby, if you ever watch rugby, if you get to a certain number of goals, you can get a bonus point, or do you go down the route of, possibly, if you have a, a, a goalless draw, it's, say, one point, if you have a score draw, you get two points, and then maybe um, three or four points for a win. Right, I disagree with <laughs> getting an extra point for goals. Even though goals win games. Yeah, okay, um, well, I've got a few counters for that, but go on. I d- yeah, I kind of agree of not getting a point for a nil-nil, but it feels like an achievement where you defend, like your job for the yeah. game is defending and trying to keep your position from scoring. I think you should get a, a point for a draw, but I think you... For a score, one-one draw. You should one get two points for a... I think, I don't think I should get two yeah, I think you should get a point for a draw, Two points for a score draw and then four points for a win. So you still got that, that thing of win. Yeah. However, however, just to go back a step on the points for more goals thing. It would definitely stop teams coming to part of us in the sense that even if you know you're going to get a hiding, if you can get to say three goals, you've got a point already. And it's, you know? a, it's a thing for no. Lyle, particularly the reason we've got this podcast is for the Premier League, which has become tactical nil nil. Yeah, yeah. And there's quite often games where two teams turn up for a nil nil. Yeah, exactly. And Hopefully, if there's an extra point on offer, or one less, not having a point on offer for getting a nil-nil, there would be an incentive to score, even if it becomes stopping at one, or at least you see two goals. So, you're, you're trying to, um, say for example, the team just pretty much part of the bus for 90 minutes, yeah. you're not rewarding them for getting the point, but you're not rewarding the team who's p- try to play football and try to score. Well, you are, though, if they score. If they don't no, score, no, but if they don't score. Well, then they need to work on their, their centre forwards, don't they, in training. So... I would praise if someone part of the bus, if my team um, were shit and pretty much played against. I mean, that's up for debate. That's a different, <laughs> different podcast altogether as well. <laughs> Depends which team you're on about. Um, but I would be absolutely delighted to get a, a, a. Oh, I've got a brilliant point away from home against top of the league that yeah. could survive. I could survive. My team could survive in the league from relegation just for that well, point. The thing is, we're, nil, nil. we're talking about. But us then. Again. We're but then again, rounds. like if it's a score draw, like my team, he needs the title. I'm losing by a point. Um, oh, we'll let you score in the last minute. That's two extra points. You're yeah, saying, I mean, you, yeah, I could win the t- title. Oh, I'll let you score in the last minute. Yeah, you're, talking the about, you're talking about bums, then, aren't you? you effectively, no, 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 you're talking about match things, aren't you? Saying like, oh, we'll let you score. But could you, you know? win, that, that win the title because of a draw, a score draw? Yeah, but you can win. A, you can win the title on a, a, a no score draw, couldn't you? Yeah, but that's different. Well, it's not though, is it? You know, you're saying not to get a point. I mean, let's be no, fair. No, I said, you know, I said you get a point well, I don't for think, a draw. I, I, two yeah, I don't think I should get, we should get a point for nil. Let's be fair. It depends. While you're, it on depends. Person, while you're on personal matters regarding your own teams, you have both at some stage in our adult lives and our Sunday league careers moaned at me for saying let's keep a clean sheet first or safety first yeah. or nil-nil first, right? Yeah. So you know I'm reluctantly leaving this because yeah, I okay. want to reward a nil-nil more than anyone in the world. <laughs> but we have to do what's right for football Look, here. I, yeah. I, I think there can be games that you, like, if... You can't score against a team that's pretty much defended. There's something wrong. Yeah, okay, no, go on. Go, go, I can see where you're going. You go, I, you go. I think we need to focus. I agree on both. It's, yes I, and no. I think Charlie's yeah. main focus started on the professional level, to be fair. With well, the, yeah. Because this it, is why we're not. We're I don't not think you're going to get many nil nil. Like, you don't really see many nil nil. Because teams aren't in, good in, enough in defensively. Anyway. No, but you'd, I, I've played in even local teams where we've gone, as, as long as we can hold this together, so as long as we don't concede, I'll happily take a nil nil. And that's ridiculous. That's, like, even if people are paying a fiver, you know. The point I'm getting at is that as a, a player, 
I hate nothing more than being told, right, let's see if we can soak it up or something like that, you know? It's, it's boring, it's awful. Being told, right, just hit the corners, we, we might be able to get something from that. So are you not having the same mentality when it's a nil-nil? Well, no. When it's nil-nil compared to when you're 3-2 up in the last few minutes. What I'm saying is, no, no. I mean, there's but no... you've earned that position, haven't you? There's no obligation... You're still saying they're in the position. Keep the well, clean sheet. I think you're missing a point slightly, Craig. There's no obligation to say you have to score. What I'm saying is, is you could settle for the, the one point of a nil-nil. You know, you don't have to. What I'm saying is, it's a bit more of an incentive and it might encourage people to attack a bit more. In the same way that if you maybe had a bonus point instead, maybe not the draws, but a bonus point for scoring three or four goals. Let's say four goals. If you're three, two up, think about this as someone who's playing in a game now. Your mentality changes even again and makes for a more exciting game. If you're I, I three, don't think right. I don't think if we keep pushing, we can get a fourth here. I, I don't think, think it's fair for, the, if, for example, the team like, oh, oh shit, and they're playing against teams that are at the top and they're scoring for fun and they've really earned that extra point within the first 45 minutes. And then it, up the t- yeah, and then no, it grows. It, for you example, got, if, if you're top of the table and a couple of teams up there, they're getting extra points because they're scoring so many goals. Yeah. Does, does that make that competitive? I guess, I guess the main counter for Charlie's point is we're at risk. If we talk about the skill and we do also yeah. worry about how many teams defend. can't defend. You're losing the exactly defending. what I'm going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, do that. we get to the stage where we don't reward people who have got a skill? No, but I think that's if you Might look well at it, it from a two pronged <laughs> attack, then if you say right, we're going to try and attack better to score more goals, so we don't, so we do get an extra point. But it also means if we can defend better by not conceding, we'll get three points. You might even get four points if we get over three goals. Do you see what I mean? Whereas I know what you're saying about the defending. So, a little bit. So, say for example, say for your rule, obviously you wanted uh, both teams. Uh, sorry, if your team scores more than three goals, you get an extra yeah. point. Yeah. So, what if it finishes four three? Then both teams get a point. They so get a bonus point on top. So the winning team get four points. The losing team get points. But you're also rewarding two teams that haven't defended. So the yeah. bonus points is yeah. no. But I think that's good. Is that not more entertaining though? There's a no. reason. No. But you scored three goals and still lost. I think that's a sure. certain element. Sure. If Roy scores, if Roy scores three goals and lost, I'll be pissed off. The thing about it'd be slightly no. If he's slightly cushioned, there's about eight countries in the world that play rugby. Yeah, no, no. That's the reason. Yeah, but what I mean is, is that it, it, I'm just saying totally it could make for a more exciting. I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement with the score draws getting an yeah. extra point, or the nil nils not getting the point. Although that's a bit risky because of the defending. Oh well, yeah, because also the, you're the bonus point. point. And you, you, I don't. You, yeah, I think you point. can't say that a draw is the same as a loss. I think. Okay, I'll tell you. We'll go back a step. We'll, obviously, I think we're not in agreement over the the extra point for getting more than three goals. Although I think it would it would make it certainly make for a bit I more totally exciting football. Disagree, yeah. I think However, it would destroy defending. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, but that's exactly what's more exciting. Play, you might as well not play No, but size. I think that would encourage you to defend more because you know there's an extra point available for them. Say you're top of the table and it's a two point gap. You know you've got to defend properly, but you also need to have an attack. It's it encourages both sides not, of the do game. Do you not risk losing the skill and having four defenders who are John Arnorisa who just shoot from forty yards on the hope that one will go in every twenty minutes? Yeah, no, I think I think you'd be surprised. I think it would encourage people to attack more. But anyway, I think we're putting that on the shelf because I don't think that's going to go here. I do think that there's got to be mileage in the fact of nil-nil draws. And I know what you're saying at local level it doesn't happen. You got you've only got to go slightly into the semi-pro leagues, and there's, there's oh, a absolutely. lot more of them there. You as know? soon as we get to the English pyramid, we're talking nil nils. And I think I, that I, there I, should I, be rewarded. I have, seen, I have seen that in the for at the, least uh, trying to attack. There's nothing worse. I mean, I'm going slightly to the elite level, but you know we can we'll go backwards on that. You can do, no, yeah, but it has been seen in that there, how many times have you seen teams? I mean, I've even played in a game once where we we had a, a eleven players and we had a centre forward, but it was only nominally a centre forward, as in it was pretty much two banks of five more or less. Mm-hmm. You know, and that you shouldn't be rewarding that in a sense, in my opinion. I think that's so anti football and anti thing that. All right, so, yes, you can still get the point for for pulling that off if you get a nil nil draw. So, fair play to so, you. So, if a player gets sent off, yeah. And your team, right? That's it, right? We need to defend now. But you're still going to yeah. get the point. You're still going to get a point. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, but, but you should. Like, if you could score, but how can you score? But, like get an extra bonus. But point? one of the things you have to look at is in all of Think these of the league incentive. systems, the league systems we're talking about. Once we get to the playoffs, once we get to cup semi-finals, once we get to European football, the away goals mean yeah. everything. The away that's goals yeah, mean more. Different. They count that's almost different. as an extra point. So why that's not different. do that during the league season? Why not do that? Two season. points for a score draw. I think, I think that's no. the way I'd go four for a win because you still need to have that I wouldn't chance to win I think it's unfair to point? say you only get one point more for scoring one yeah. well, say, it depends yeah. what you're looking to create are you looking to create the American style entertainment or are you looking to create the competition well I think if you got an extra point for a score draw and then got an, so but I, so then I, there's no more incentive to get the draw than there is to get a well, win well there is because it's one more point you think about how many teams have been relegated on goal difference who was it went down from League 2 was it Barnet this year yeah. you think if, they, if that system had been employed 
You know, but if the difference between a win and a score draw then becomes two points again, do you not risk when a team's one 0 up that they're going to defend for their life, so they keep the extra two points again? Then? Yeah, okay, to a point. But then I suppose that would happen if they had one point extra, wouldn't it? You know, your natural instinct is to. But if the low, if the near the bottom of the table teams can't score and they can't defend, how? how I mean, how to be honest, bonus points anyway. If I was one 0 up and you get two points for a score draw and three points for a win, I'd go, hey, let's keep attacking, see what happens, yeah. and not worry about defending yeah, to well, win. Yeah, point. And then you but if it was four points for a win. I would say get to the corner flag. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, I don't think you've got much incentive to win there, have you? Really? Well, no, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, not yeah, the right point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let, let's forget about the three and four point. I think the, 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 the crux of it is... is the reward for a score draw. It should draw, be a reward for a score draw. I think you should get an extra point for a score draw. I think it would just reinvigorate football a bit. You know, if it, it's not saying it's stale in general, but pretty much from top through to the very bottom levels. It's fallen into a routine and a pattern. And everything ends it? up copying the Premier League, and look where we are now. Yeah, with t- two teams going for I, a I, I, I remember watching um, when Luton was in the um, conference. Yeah. And the lower league teams are, are part timers, and mm. they pretty much they part of the bus when they're yeah, out every week. Yeah. So, and obviously, look, some of them got rewarded with points and got wins, given credit for that. But yeah, but think about it from your perspective as a fan. How boring was it watch them see this? I mean, I watched Luton versus Grimsby last year. Luton had uh, sorry, Grimsby had no intention of attacking genuinely had no, they had the, the fellow Danny Collins who played centre half and I swear he had no idea it was going he got it and hit it as hard as he could and they tried to play admittedly Luton won but he tried to play for a nil-nil it was I, the I, most boring 45 minutes I've ever seen because there was no incentive to even try and attempt I, to score I watched, I watched West Ham United yeah exactly and example. both teams didn't want to score well, they, the point being is they didn't want to lose now I know we're going to this like risk of you know talking about the Premier League and the risks of um, getting relegated we're obviously financially but huge. that's the same in every league yeah exactly so you shouldn't uh, you should, uh, in my opinion that would negate the turning up to a game and not trying not to lose as opposed to trying to win you know I think I, I'm not I saying it's both, it, that's part of the game now it's yeah, part but, of the game but, that, but that's my point but it should, it should, want it to become yeah. part of the game long I think it's, if it's, it's tactically it, yeah if you was coaching, if you was coaching you your side, we're, we're talking about purists here. You've got to enjoy mass, watching a nil-nil. Game, that's going to be well. So hard from someone that right. likes a cliche of nil-nils, I'm surprised he's actually uh, disagreed in that one. I know, no, but if you look I, at, I know it's wrong for me to say this. I shouldn't be jumping off this side of the fence. But the point is, it's not good for football, and it's not good for the global audience. I mean, it? if you're not good for an audience, but if you're a tactician, it's not enjoyable to play. Yeah, it, really, you've got it? people. For, from the Premier League down to local semi-pro level, paying money to watch whether it be a fiver or, yeah. or five hundred yeah, pounds. I agree. The fact is, they're paying to watch football, and at the very least, I think those people should be rewarded for watching the game to so at least try and see two teams. I'm not saying look, because it's I, not I, you are going to get nil nils even if you do have the extra point. That's obviously the way football works. But at least you can see teams who are trying to score, and trying you're paying, to attack. You're thirty for a professional game. You're paying thirty for just yeah. on TV now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you take Luton, let's say because uh, you know it's not a Premier League thing. There will be teams that probably Luton will play against next year who are going to go for a nil-nil, okay? And you've got, you've got people forking out a lot of money, spending a lot of their time on the afternoon to watch a team not even try and attack. Not even try and attack. Like, just literally stop there. Now, I know you say from a purist point of view, that's great, but I just think if you had that extra point, you think you've only got to look at the leagues this year in any league, in any part of the country, that extra few points, if you totaled up, say, right, took three or four nil-nils from each team and you made them one all, for example... Those four points could be the difference between relegations. And those are the teams that show the ambition are the ones that stay in the football league. If, if, um, if um, New and Hills was the way, England would be out of this. Well, England would be. And out rightly out so, then. Because if, yeah, if, if, if you look at. Okay, look at the first few games of the World Cup this year. I know they've ended up 1 0. But let's be honest, the, the two that were last minute winners, they were bloody awful. I mean, Iran, for what they did, all right, I know this. Iran did pretty much nothing. Exactly. But that's the point. Because but they, they tried. Knew, but they could knew they they'd tried. get away with getting a point. There's a difference. There's a difference. They tried. But they, yeah, did, but they, they tried. And they got the, they got the reward at the end. Really? It's a I just think you'd see so many end ga- end of games that would be more dramatic. Because teams, the last two minutes, they throw the bus at it, trying to get the extra point. If, they're, if they've got three or four points to catch up to get out of the relegation zone towards the end of the season. Yeah. Or to qualify for the... Prime so, prime the, for the, for the example, obviously going back to Premier League, Huddersfield played Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Yeah. Huddersfield got their. Like, Huddersfield didn't even want to attack the game. They, no, needed, they needed the point to survive. Yeah. They got the goal. Yeah. Against the run of play. The one chance mm. And then they conceded. And after that, all Huddersfield did was kick it into touch. But kick it into touch. Now, but you've still seen no, two goals. No, no, but no, yeah. I've seen. Right, like, one went off his face and one went off his face. Yeah, but it's what you're paying But, no, no, but after that goal, 
How boring was it? Yeah, but the fact is that they still had and to put mean, that effort in. No, but whether that if that goal comes in the first ten minutes or in the last ten minutes, at least they've had that intent of trying to attack. Look, look at the, the Portugal Spain game. Okay, right, both a draw. That probably that game probably deserved two points in the sense of Portugal or uh, maybe weren't the strongest Spain, but they hit everything on the counter because they had that that incentive of that pride, I suppose, because it was a local derby of of what's the word. Of showing some sort of intent, you know, there's no way the Portuguese fans would have accepted them having ten men behind the ball against their local sort of rivals. What I mean is, is it's that sort of mentality almost you'd need to have to maybe encourage people to just attack. You just want to see goals. That was a great game, not because of Isco's little turns and that. You know, for a purist, it was quite nice. It was a great game because there was goals in it. It was good goals. You you want more to show for it. You want more people wanting to put on a show. That is the main aim of football. We watch it. We don't watch it because we want to watch a tactical game. 95% of people don't want to watch it to be a tactical game. 95% of people want to watch it to see a show, to see entertainment. Mm. And I'll be honest, 95% of people play it to do that. I hate playing in games. I mean, I've I've played a few nil nils and they're most awful games to play in, you know? I suppose what I'm saying is is you could still be rewarded, like you say, Huddersfield. If Huddersfield had gone to Chelsea and got a nil-nil, fair play to them, they get their point and they get rewarded for that. But it'd just be nice if they knew, right, we can even get an extra one in it. That would make us double safe then, you know. Let's go forward well, Sometimes they're not good enough. They're not good enough to actually well, attack. Well, then you take the point. But, but then they take the gamble but, if they want to play for the nil-nil at that point. But you're reducing but you're the trying, amount you, of... You're saying they need to attack. But you're reducing to be the amount of times. Because not every you time... you glad it <laughs> Not every one of those Huddersfield games, not every team will say, we don't want to attack. Yeah. Okay, some still will. Chelsea, but Chelsea some of them did won't. that against Man City. Didn't bother attacking. Exactly, but would they go if there were two points on the line? Exactly. They were in a title fight. You think about it. If there's three points in the, the league title, okay, they go into play Man City, for example. Man City are top, Chelsea are second. Three points between the two of them. You go right, you go there, you get a draw, not a bad result, leaves you two points off. However, if you can get, if you can nick one against them, regardless if you can see the one the other end, that's two points now. You know, I just think it, it gives you that extra incentive. Hmm? Well, later otherwise that wouldn't work out. No, no, what I'm saying is is that all right, I know both teams are getting points, but I'm just saying it I've completely naffed that up, I don't know, that's a rubbish example. <laughs> you want two separate Yeah, that's yeah. one two separate that's <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. Wait, no, sorry, sorry, right, that's right. Yeah, fuck it, no, I've had a man there, anyway. Oh dear me. Just starting point again, Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Chelsea are playing one team, Man City are playing yeah, the other. The now there's three Fire points between the two. Side. Chelsea might go for that draw, the score draw, because it reduces the gap. I suppose that's what I'm saying. Or if you've got a game in hand, for example. You've got a game in hand midway. Yeah, that's different. It's not though, is it? Because you're you're still getting you'll get as many points for drawing four as what you are drawing nil nil. And I think there should be a slight reward for the fact that at least you've tried to give the game a go and you put four balls in, a four goals in it. You get to that point where it makes the league time more interesting. You get to a three three point gap and you don't have to go. Oh, well, we only need a point mm. more because what if they get a score draw and a win? Then there's five points. You know. It I just look at Barnet for example. You know, Barnet could be slightly different. They scored a lot of goals later on in the year. Uh, later on in the season, didn't they? Got quite a few. You know, I think they could have been rewarded for that. If I'm not, I know they didn't draw that many, but you know, had they had the option to draw, could have stayed up. You know, for example. So well, we've got well, two points. We're going to disagree on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're ever going to get to the bottom of that. But, no, but um, I, I, I think that could be a, a new way of spru- sprucing up football a little bit. And so I've I think been trying to five aside, can't I? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's never going to be nil nil. Yeah. Might as well get two points straight away. How long before the nil nil's coming five aside? Yeah, how long true. before how we long go? You might as well do, you might do <laughs> five aside. You might as well do a mercy rule. Oh, as soon as it gets to six seven nil, I well, forget, forget this now. We ain't going to catch up. We don't want to agree on that one. No, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> You ready for a question of the day? Are we going to know the answer this week? Um, probably not. Oh, wonderful. That's why these question of the days are hard. Go right, on. um, National League introduced oh, the playoffs. Hell. Right, go on. Like, this is a non-league show. That's the point of this podcast. Yeah. No, I know, I know, I know. National League introduced playoffs in 2002-2003. Um, which was the best position to go up? In second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh. Well, I don't think it can be third, is it? Well, it can't be sixth and seventh because that's only come in the last couple of weeks, last year, this season. Like, the season just gone, yeah. I vaguely remember from the playoff final this year. Someone, we've, been to, we've been to two playoff finals. Someone mentioned something about fourth place, and I don't know if it's right or not, or I've just remembered a completely different stat. So hang on, just. But I'm just... going to go for fourth. Right, run these by me again. What, what positions are we talking about? Second, third, fourth, or fifth, because six right. and seven. Which teams got promoted? So it's not. I don't think it's going to be second because I think there's too many times in and any, in any time. Most times when we lost. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, well, we so you've gone fourth. Fifth in one season. 
Second one. with the with the second year. Uh, no, we were third in it. Oh no, we were. It's the first year we were second. First year we were second. Yeah. So you're saying fourth. I'm going to say fourth. Charlie. I've got no basis of facts on this, but uh, I'm going it's, to plump, it's like, it's like, plump for fifth because I think there's been a few really? times that in other leagues the bottom playoff team has actually gone up. Right. Um, you're both wrong. <laughs> oh really? Right. Yes. Okay. Um, Continues to have it. It's still nil nil. <laughs> <laughs> We will get to one nil at some point. Yeah. Oh gosh. Play for a nil nil. We might have to both not get a yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We might have to drop this segment. Right. Um, right. Um, second place, only five teams have gone up. Third place, seven. Fourth place, four times. Um, I'm not going to bother go run. I could bother go in front. Who uh, finish in what position and when they've got up? But nah, it's going to take forever. Got time for that. Um, Yes. What about fifth? You didn't say how many went up fifth? in fifth? No one went up in fifth. Oh, that's ridiculous. That's Despite, someone must have gone up from the bottom playoff team, surely. Well, Louis had an opportunity, but some linesman decided to give a goal when he was miles ah, offside. Sure. That's but a bit about that, lads. Come on. Uh, <laughs> it was VAR for end. that. Yeah. It's all worked out in the end. Uh, yeah, right. RIP York. So that, that quiz is still... Quiz is dead, still nil-nil. Nil. Yeah. We predicted that for the whole series, have we not? <laughs> <laughs> you got a nil-nil, boys. Yeah, no, this is... How boring is this point? That's, that's what I'm trying to say now. It's nil-nil. How boring is We're this? We're not getting it right. It's going to get done eventually. People are going to get bored of it. See, they need want to see goals. They want to see points. That's what I'm saying. Easy one next week. I'll try and get easy one next week. <laughs> Pretty good. So that concludes today's show. Did you enjoy it? I did, yeah. It was uh, apart yeah. from the last bit, which was obviously a boring nil-nil. Yeah, very yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. No, no, it's very good. No, looking forward to next. It was week. nice to have two topics we completely disagreed. Do you know who's on the uh, shit list for next week, Craig? Um, or at least the positions of them. No spoilers, just the positions. We're gonna have to go for a right midfielder. A right midfielder, okay. And a right back. I'm gonna go for a right inside. Oh, we're doing okay. a right, right, right inside, and I, I will try. Not to make it Portsmouth players this week, <laughs> I do apologise. At least one. Well, tune, in next, tune in next week to find out who it is. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Let us know your thoughts on the topics and the players in the shitlist in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe.